Who on your team is going to be the surprise breakout swimmer this season? Luke Miller. Definitely. Uh, Luke Miller. Uh, I think Aiden Hayes. Aiden Hayes. Uh, I would name this guy as well. Noah Henderson. Welcome to Social Kick. I'm Brian Lundquist. He's John Mullen. It's Wolfpack time. We've got Nils Korstangi, Kasper Stokowski joining us side by side. Broskis that live right side by side. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Welcome. Thanks for joining us. What's yeah, up? No problem. So first thing I got to know is everybody in the NCAA seems to be adding this like drawing something. You've got like the Virginia V and then you guys got this diamond that you draw on the chest. Give me, give me the background. Is it like I shave my roommate's back and then he draws the diamond on my chest? How do you, got, how do you guys do it? Yeah, so it's a pretty old tradition um, to be, uh, with all due respect to other teams, um, we were the first ones to put something on our chest and they all copied us. You know, we, we got the original diamond. Um, yeah, well, yeah, we all uh, draw a, a diamond on our chest uh, for every meme. Uh, I know you want to know uh, what it means, but we cannot tell you since it's a, <laughs> since it's a secret. Uh, everyone uh, who joins the team, who's new, uh, they know about it. They know what it means. Uh, and it means, I can tell you, it means a lot for us. And uh except of just swimming for our team, uh, for our teammates, for our families, we swim also for the diamond. Yeah, we, uh, we used to have a bunch of team traditions uh, when I swam at Auburn, and there were things that were specific to the team, you know, whether that would be like beginning of the season traditions, and then also um, for NCAA specifically, when you made that team, they were kind of rite of passage things that you got to be a part of. Do you guys have things like that throughout the year that are just kind of NC State uh, team traditions? Yeah, I would say we do. We have like certain things, especially at the beginning of the year, just for the freshman introduction. We have uh, certain stories we tell the freshmen. And then throughout the year, we have certain traditions we do, certain team sets we do, you know, obviously just like like at Auburn. Um, like I remember seeing back home, seeing the uh, the Gatorade Challenge. I don't know, is that what you guys still do? Is that like an actual team tradition? Dude, you know what's funny? I just texted Brett the other day. Um, and said that like the anniversary was coming up for that of 15 years. And we're like, oh, my God, it's so old. Yeah. Um, you got it? Uh, yeah, that, uh, yeah, we did that all the time. It was. <laughs> I said Brian was in the video. He's the one of the stars, if you guys really? don't recognize him okay. now. Yeah. No, he, texted me, he texted me that day after I'd had a giant sandwich for lunch. And was like, hey, the flow swimming guy's coming this is what's going to happen. Like send me the stupidest drills that we would never do. <laughs> so then I show up to practice and he's like, here's, or he had texted me, here's what's going to happen. We're going to chug Gatorades until we throw up. And I'm like, all right, I'm down. And I had just come off short course worlds. I, I barely practiced like twice that week. And I was out for like a week and a half. I'm like, Oh my God, this is going to suck. But so yeah, that was our tradition. Do you guys do stuff like that? Yeah, we, we have we have those kind of sets. Uh, there, that's also a secret we cannot tell you about it, but uh, uh, it gives us a goosebumps when you think about that, you know. Uh, and um, every freshman, uh, I guess, has to do it, uh, especially during a Christmas training. So uh, yeah, we have those traditions. Yeah, man, a, a lot of secrets over there. Um, yeah. <laughs> And, and you mentioned one thing about the diamond on the chest at every meet. So if you guys do like an inner squad meet, are you guys wearing diamonds all the way there? Uh, you have a get up swims at practice. How, how far does it go? Oh, well, I feel like, um, like I would say every official meet we do it okay. in international meets. We don't do it. No, it's, we don't do it. No, no there's no. like different colors of, of, uh, of diamonds. Like that's something we can tell because it's pretty yeah, obvious. Yeah. Like you have the, the, the diamond outline, that's what we do during dual meets. And like once we taper, we color it in. Um, and then NCAAs is the red diamond. There's also a story about the red diamond. Um, I, I don't know if we could tell that story. Have you ever heard that? Yeah, of course, from Brayden. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Brayden, yeah, yeah. Brayden tells that story every single year during NCAAs. So you'll actually just ask him one time. Um, and I think at trials, the Americans wear the silver diamond. Yeah. Oh, I haven't noticed that. Okay. Right, silver diamond, something like that. The yeah, different silver. color, it's yeah, a yeah. different color. We wouldn't know. Yeah, <laughs> it's cool to have that team unity though at international meets too, because like as you guys know, having been part of the college team uh, experience and 
with a program that from the outside looking in, it just seems like there's like this real, real brotherhood or camaraderie that happens. Um, <clears throat> but sometimes at international meets, you can feel kind of without that. Like, even if you, even if you have a pretty large national team, it's just a, a really different vibe. Um, so ha have you guys experienced that at all as, as accomplished international swimmers? Um, like, is it different to get up for, international meets than it is for you when you're repping NC State and you're at a big college meet? Uh, I would say um, it's true what you just said, um, especially for like Europeans for us where uh, swimming is more uh, individual sport, like people treat it more individual. And uh, here at end, like in college swimming, um, we swim for the team, you know, it's not only about us, it's not only about our one swim, uh, we have goals, we have a team goals, and uh, we cheer for each other, and uh, we, uh, we, will all, we always have uh, our backs. So, great example of it is um, uh, at Worlds in Melbourne uh, in December, I was there with uh, six other swimmers from Poland, so we had a small team, uh, and we also sent like four people from NC State, something like that. Yeah, yeah and I, I've heard, I've heard Nils or like David or Andrea cheering, cheering up for me, you know? So that's something, that's something unique uh, that we have here. And even though we are like two pros from serious or uh, like I said, worlds or Europeans, we would cheer for each other because we are teammates, you know? So uh, that's, that's something rare and unique. Casper, you mentioned Worlds and, um, <clears throat> you know, that's kind of a unique experience to have a big international meet in the middle of the season. But just curious if you could give us a, a lens into how your season's been going, including that meet. I know last year you were talking a bit after having won NCs about like the changes in training and having incorporated into the backstroke group, the two back group a couple days a week and having some concern about ah, is that going to kill your speed as you get to NCAAs and after swimming really fast, you know, you're like, Oh, I'm, I'm bought in now. Like I understand. I trust the plan. I trust Braden. Like what are you working on this year? How's the season going? Give us a, a sense of how the world's experience went. So obviously, uh, like I said, I fully trust Braden. And, uh, even though, uh, starting this fall, uh, we switched a little bit, um, um, practice schedule and he even put me to a distance group. Uh, on Tuesdays, where I swim uh, a lot yeah. of called uh, freestyle sets. Uh, I'm coming uh, from a background where I used to swim a lot of freestyle, a lot of long distance freestyle sets. Uh, where my favorite set used to be 10 400s descent. Uh, sh obviously, short course. I'm not talking long course, but I, I I used to I used to swim that and I loved it. Um, so uh, yeah, we, we we decided this season to focus a little bit more on threshold uh, and not even doing that backstroke, but like with freestyle that should help us uh, prepare for two back as well. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, like you said, I just had a taper meet. Um, I think I'm uh, I'm used to it because the the meet format in Poland uh, is like we have nationals in December, then it's uh, age group nationals in March, like late March. So it kind of it kind it's kind of similar as as we do here, right? Like I had worlds, and I have NCs, so I, I was ready for that coming uh, coming to college swimming. Uh, so yeah, uh, not, nothing really uh, has changed. Nils, what about you? You were off to a hot start this season with a popping a 44 in the 100 fly early on. And um, just curious what, you know, how, coming off of a great NCs last year and some international success, what what are you working on right now? What do you feel like you've learned and taken from the past seasons that you're trying to figure out how to how to just inch forward and and improve this year and what you're doing on a daily basis? Yeah, um, so it's funny that you bring up that swim. Uh, that was kind of like a practice swim I did because uh, it, it was just to see like where I was. And like for me, stroke count, kick count is a big deal. Like if I don't hit my walls right, like I'm done for, you know. So I always try to focus on doing that early in the season. Um, this season, unfortunately, I had a little bit of an accident. I, uh, I messed up my ankle um, when I was taking a – a casual walk by the lake basically i <laughs> fell into a hole and just like 
I don't know. I couldn't kick for two months straight. And that leading into Worlds was definitely not the best preparation I could have had. Yeah. Um, so I really saw that I was lacking underwater mostly. Um, so like during the race, I didn't really feel the ankle at all, but I just saw that I didn't train it as much. And um, so that's like one of my biggest uh, points right now, you know, trying to get those underwaters back and trying to get um, my kick back. Uh, I feel like for now it's been going pretty well. I got a really good Christmas training block. Um, Your pull got stronger and everything. Yeah, my pull got a lot stronger for sure. And um, I feel like, you know, maybe maybe that helped me out in the long run. But in, in the short term at Worlds, it kind of kind of blew, um, you know, especially seeing guys pop off. I talked to Casper about that. Like, you know, sometimes it's frustrating because you're just like waiting for it to work out. And, you know, for him, it worked out, which is, you know, which was really spectacular. It's been what he's been working for for all of his life, you know, with that medal in the in the backstroke. Um, and maybe that moment for me will come. But I, for now, I just got to trust that process and just, you know, keep focusing on the training and maybe results will come. Yeah. One thing that I think is really cool about teammates that are super close is that Casper, you're the one who looked at Nils and said, Hey, your pool got a lot stronger. Mm-hmm. Like to me, that's what college swimming is about, especially like, yeah, pro swimming too, but it's a tighter group, but especially in college swimming, you're that's what makes teams successful is that, you know, what your teammates are working on and you're holding them accountable for it. And you're the first one to champion their success when they've, you know, when they've nailed it or when they've developed in a certain area. I just oh, think yeah. that's really awesome. And that little moment <laughs> for sure showcase what the culture is like for you guys there. Hell yeah. Like we observe each other um, during practice a lot, you know, like I love to observe how people swim. Maybe I can learn from something from them, you know, or maybe I can like give them a feedback, you know, I love to do it. Um, today, uh, we swam with Nils and we were doing some power stuff at the end of the practice. And uh, we had to stay a little bit for, uh, longer than the group. Uh, and I was like, let, let, let me hop uh, to the next line. I want to I wanna race, you know, mm-hmm. even though it was a fly and it's not my stroke, you know, uh, my main stroke. I wanted to race him, you know, and I asked him about technique. If, uh, if, if he goes with his hand wide or like he comes close by the hips, you know. So, um, yeah, we learn from each other a lot. Yeah, yeah, you really get different perspectives on on swimming. Um, and that's something I feel like in college swimming, it's it's especially so because um, we benefit from each other's success. And you know, in the end, the points are scored, and you win as a team. Uh, it's it's less about individual success and um, just having so many guys and different perspectives around you. Like you really. I don't know. You have very interesting discussions. And in the end, I feel like you make each other a lot better. Yeah. At NC's last year, uh, NC State got fourth. It was a, a great team battle. We, we were seeing a lot of great races. You know, obviously, Casper's 100 back was one that stands out when he when he got the win. Um, Casper, can you talk us through um, your goals here for the upcoming NCAA championships and the rest of the season? Uh, yeah, sure. So, um Basically, like I said, uh, I wouldn't say the main goal, but uh, another goal up there would be like to swim a crazy good 200 backstroke. Uh, it's like one of those events that scares me, uh, but in a good way uh, and uh, gives me a lot of motivation and I train for it. Obviously, I don't forget about uh, my main event, which is um, under back. Um, so uh, I would say like, Hitting that 43 mark in a backstroke would be great. Uh, obviously, 19 uh, in, a, in a 50 back. No, no, no one has gone yet a 19, and that's another like magic, magic barrier, you know, to to reach. Uh, I'm not, I'm not that far of it. So, so uh, yeah, let's say I have those kind of goals uh, to reach. Obviously, if I won. It's part of the process, you know, one day we'll get there uh, and just help the team, just help the team uh, score the points, get better. Um, we're reaching, we're reaching um, for the for the highest place again. We want to get better uh, than the last year. And obviously we're hoping, uh, we're hoping to, you know, maybe get one of those rings in the relay this year. So, yeah, definitely. 
Yeah, you mentioned going under 20 and under 44. What are the things you feel are going to help you get to those parts? Definitely start. Like I lack in a, in a, in a start. My backstroke uh, start position is bad. Uh, we already discussed with Braden uh, after Worlds because uh, he, he was there. Um, he was watching my races and he noticed that uh, I've raced a lot of like races next to Murph. So well, we could have seen that that difference in between me and him uh, and a lot of the other top backstrokers there. And that's where I lack. So that's where we like kind of shifted in the weight room and uh, in the pool uh, to work on that. Uh, and the other thing that he noticed in my backstroke is of the push-offs, where is, where, where is the wall here? Instead of pushing off like that, I push way much deeper, and mm. then I have to come off, you know? So mm -hmm. I do like a very big rainbow uh, underwater. And is that purely just to get un under the waves of all the swimmers coming in, or what are the reasons behind trying to get such a, a deep push-off? I guess that's what uh, that's what uh, I was taught. You know, uh, when I was a kid, I used to I used to train a like very deep pool, and we would do like underwaters uh, pretty deep. Would like go uh, down like three meters, and we like kick there. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't, I'm not trying to think what why it comes from. I'm trying to think uh, how to fix it. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh Nils, obviously you've, like you said, you had your walking injury, it sounds like. So I guess no more long walks um, by the beach to protect that ankle. Um, but what are your goals here for the rest of the season? Um, my goal, honestly, would be like to be the highest point scorer on the team. Um, so I was I was that last year by like, like a tiny bit. Um, and there's a couple of guys who are really, really close to me. So I just want to be like the guy scoring the most points. And then like obviously those relays, like – at NCAA's, those are by far the most Huge. things yeah. uh, to focus on. So I got goosebumps when he was saying yeah. that. I'm telling you. <laughs> I mean, relays, that's that's like what you live for, man. You know, it's it's just different than individual. Individuals like more scary. And when you're on a relay, it's more like you're just doing it with the boys. And it's man, there's so much pressure, and that's so cool to do it together. You yeah, know? and especially being on a team like NC State, where we can like choose from like eight guys who can be on the relay it's like a chess like Braden plays a chess you know yeah. he has to think about each move you know and it just reminds me about like last year and sees like how close we were to like get the first in like two medley two free you know like it's just like ah oh. yeah that feels you that's for sure um so yeah some of those relays that'll be that's that's the focus yeah yeah, could you talk us through kind of how the relay selection process is um, discussed or, or told to the team? Like you said, obviously, you guys are great at almost, uh, pretty much every relay, and you have a huge group of guys. Now, they're obviously are very tough decisions that Braden and the rest, of the rest of the coaching staff has to make. How does he kind of let everyone know, and, and how does the team get behind that and continue to have a, a positive and supportive environment? Um, yeah, it's... Well, the way Braden chooses is obviously just like who who has the biggest chance of doing well. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, like an example last year, um, David Curtis was taken off of the four by fifty, like yeah. the two hundred free relay. But we didn't know until we, the last minute. Yeah, was, we had no idea. I, I took his spot, and I was like, because it was um, the two three is always the day before hundred back. Mm -hmm. And uh, Braden during the lunch told me that bring the suit to the pool, you might be on the relay. And before the meet started, he said like we gotta wait for uh, David's fifty three to see if if he's gonna drop from the from the prelims time. If not, you're gonna be on the relay. So we watched his race. Um, it wasn't great. So I came up to him and I was like, so so what's the decision? He was like. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. And I, I saw him. It was like, you know, like mixed about it. Like he didn't know what to say. So I was like, fine. But like we have like an hour and 15 minutes uh, and I have to decide if I should start preparing for the, for the 53 or I jump to the pool and I practice for the 100 back tomorrow. So I came up to him again after like 10 minutes. I'm like, man, I'm ready. Like just put me in. He was like, you ready? You in. I was like, okay, let's do it. And uh, 
I think it was a good decision. Obviously, um, at those kind of meets, you need uh, to have the guys that can step up no matter what uh, for every event. And we're glad that we have a great team and we can uh, we, we can broadly choose in between, you know. So uh, that helps a lot. Yeah, yeah. We have, like, huge luxury when it comes to depth, especially in the sprint. So, like, if if somebody like David just, like, falls out, you know, like, Casper can step up. It's I bet for Brain it's super difficult though, especially like having to do that last minute. Like obviously we know kind of who's going to be on what relay um, and who's the backup. So Casper kind of knew it was coming, but um, yeah, it's still you know it's it's always it's always a difficult. Uh, you have no idea what your choices will mean. Yeah, um, like hundred free for example, ACCs. Like we had. Under free? Yeah, the oh, under four, free? no four man relay with Sam. Oh over. yeah, oh, we yeah. we had like four guys who could have swam that race, you know, and he decided to go for a freshman, and he did really great job. Like yeah, he the, anchored the relay, he got the guys, he got us the first place. So yeah, Sam Hoover, he had the swim of his life. Yeah. just probably because we were right there with Louisville, and all the guys were at the sideline, and he just got emotional, you know. And, you know, at that point, it just works out really well. And he, I don't know, he really lived up to that moment. Yeah. yeah. So that was a good choice. Yeah. Yeah. The psychology on the coaching side for uh, relay selections is, is so, so critical. And I, I've been a part of that too. But, but it was actually, I remember some examples back when um, in the finals, uh, you know, they changed the event, changed the relay order before we got to the 400 free relay final. So I thought I was in the middle of the relay. And then after the hundred free, then coach comes up to me like in the diving break before he goes and turns in the relay card and says, Hey, you're going last. And I'm like, there's a big difference. Right. And uh, so that it like totally lit this fire in me. And I think it's really cool how just like small decisions like that, you know, surprise tactics can actually get the reaction that they want out of a swimmer too. So um, I'm actually curious uh, what you guys think about some of the changes that have been made in the NCAA over the years. Cause Prelim, like relays used to be prelim final at NCAAs. And now we're seeing their finals only, which is probably better because we get faster times, I think, overall, especially by the end of the meet, because there's fewer swims overall. But like you guys were in this situation last year with the two medley where, you know, you and Cal are in the first heat and then Florida's in this, the heat afterwards. You don't get to race head to head. Um, and so like, I don't, and then obviously we're in a four day format now. So you kind of spread it out. Whereas the 800 free relay used to be a day two thing. And so you'd have 200 freestylers that were swimming, you know, the 200 free three times in a day. And I remember doing the hundred back final and then having to turn around and get on the 800 free relay. And that my legs killed me in that 800 free relay. So like, I think it's a better, better thing, but what do you guys think about some of the changes like that? Or, or have they been for the better? And like, what else would you change to make we've it? Done, we've done the prelims and final format because yeah. uh, we swam um, 2019 uh, <laughs> uh, NCAAs yeah. in Austin, yeah. Texas. So we remember that. I swam for Gators at that time. Mm -hmm. And that was, uh, that was still here. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it was tough. It was tough having a bunch of uh, relay swims in the morning right after the individual swims and then having the swims at night and then having a relay again. It was uh, definitely way harder. Uh, and you mentioned that situation which we had um, in the two melee relay uh, last year at NCs uh, that we were in the in a slower heat. Um, I want to say it's like, worse but in the same time better because you know like you have four swimmers right one of them prefers having that pressure you know where it helps him to swim faster the other one doesn't like that and where he doesn't have people that go head to head for him it's easier to go faster so it's very individual and you got to be very flexible right now so you got to be ready for whatever yeah I think um, one of the big implications it does have is that the individual morning swims are a lot faster. Oh, uh, faster. You know, like that's, that's something we saw this year, like how extremely hard it was to make A and B final. Um, I think I think that might be an outflow of not having those relays because um, 
people can't like sit back a little and kind of like see like watch what happens you like have to be there in the morning you have to step up in the morning um and like yeah i mean for me honestly it's better that we don't have those extra swims because i i like i don't know i i die after a couple of a couple of races um but for someone like i don't know are, are you would you say that you it's the more the better or do you also like fatigue after a couple of races i fatigue but like obviously yeah. we can like fight through but like defi yeah, definitely we agree on it that uh that it's way better yeah well casper you were just at short course worlds where there was <clears throat> uh four by 50 relays for the first time and or i don't know if that was the first time but i know they didn't used to have four by 50s at the international level at short course world so um that's an evolution we've seen sort of the games that uh, the isl has included with points and um you know like elimination points for distance events i don't know why the 100 im is not an nca event what would you guys do to make ncs more exciting or would change it for the better Definitely Probably. not the fifties. Oh, the fifties? Yes, that'd be sick. Yeah, like definitely. fifty fly, fifty back. They got fifty Ooh. stroke. Definitely, man. Like seeing that, and also another addition would be hundred IM. You know, uh -huh. like those those sprint events. Yeah, you know, sprint oriented. Yeah, like people say, short course meters is fun to us because it's short, but short course yards is even shorter. So <laughs> everything happens there like instantly. You know, so. uh seeing like 50 fly or like 50 breasts just a pull out and you know a couple of strokes and who's the strongest one like i think that would be really cool to to watch yeah 50s are so cool to watch and i think it would fit in really well into the college uh mindset kind of um it would make our life a lot harder what santos could have gone on the... yeah what do you think santos would go in the 50 in the 50 fly like 50 yards fly Nineteen six. Hmm? 19.6. 19.6? I think I think that's probably 19.6, yeah. What do you call the relay? 19.5. Uh, 19.5. I've gone 19.5, 19.4 around there. Yeah, so, so he, might, might, be, yeah, right. he might be right. right. Yeah. Something around yeah, you there. Get yeah, whatever it is, he, he'd be flying. And I, I, I agree, the 50s would make it so exciting. I mean, yeah. you, get, you mentioned... Uh, like you said, not having the prelim finals and then the prelims for, you know, the hundred strokes and pretty much every event is getting so crowded. Brian and I were looking at it and how much it's changed over the years just to make top eight and then obviously top 16. But some events, you know, at the very top, you know, the records haven't been changing much. Are there any events that you two feel are kind of ripe for a big drop down? <sighs> Let me think. Uh, I was going to say. 53 when I was thinking about like the 53 it's not a record Caleb no. dressed like <laughs> how far yeah. are we going absolutely <laughs> I think I honestly think some of the relays but like here's the thing no I said he's untouchable no yeah Caleb dressed was untouchable yeah he's yeah, untouchable now, like he's untouchable. we say he's untouchable that's 70 oh, yeah. <laughs> like I don't know I've seen on Instagram I think I've seen on Brad's Instagram and where he was saying that we might see some 17 this year but um I mean, it could have, like, honestly, Jordan Crooks probably has the biggest shot right yeah. now. Yeah. Like, looking at his underwaters, he, but still, like, dropping half a second in a 53, that's like, yeah. that's ridiculous, you know? So, yeah, I um, had a conversation yesterday that, like, swimming is all about patience, you know? Like, I remember, like, I think one of my swims this summer, I finally won like best time after like six years and I dropped like 0. 0.2, you know, and I was so happy. So like seeing someone who's like almost like 20 ish, you know, um, going half of a second faster than his best time and dropping that time, that would be insane, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But didn't you do that last year in the 50 back? I mean, yeah, but like I, I've never had so many chances to swim a fifty back, you know, uh, properly. So like fifty back is not a main event uh, in NCAA's, and you don't get many chances to swim it. So like, I wouldn't say it was like a exactly drop, you know. I think I just swam it well, and the previous previous swims uh, weren't just perfect, and I wasn't ready. Uh, I was trying to. Take it as a, as a, like a hundred a little bit. So yeah. 
I don't know, man. I think 19.6 is coming. <laughs> 19.6? You never know. Yeah. Why not? We'll see, man. Like I, I told you, I got to work on my start, but uh, everything, everything has to uh, has to be done perfectly. But uh, it's a 50, you know, great example uh, coming of the worlds, you know, uh, the first final where uh, where the device uh, we had, the, they had the uh, problem with the device with the starting. Yeah, device. I forgot you were in that race. Yeah. And I was I was in the crew who swam the entire 50. So I can tell you from my experience, like yeah. if you think during the race, like especially in the 50, you're done. And yeah. during that race, I was thinking like three, four times, should I stop or not? You know, <laughs> like I had yeah. so many thoughts. Like I see Cooper next to me going. Then I saw Carter stopping on the turn. I'm like looking to my right. No one's there. Looking to my left. Cooper's still going. I'm like, man, like yeah, you can't risk yeah, stopping. Almost. Yeah. It's like too big. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, like, so you heard it though? Oh, everyone heard it. Yeah. Okay. What do you think? Do you think that they handled it the right way? What were your thoughts on how the solution of like letting you guys rest and come back and swim it later in the same session? Uh, I think uh, it would be unfortunate, like in every solution for everyone. You know, everyone was in a different spot. Dylan Carter had uh, 50 feet right after. Cooper went the fastest time. Uh, of a 50 back uh, at this meet, uh, Murphy won. Uh, I went faster than the, than the first swim. You know, like I talked with Murph after after uh, the, the second final, and he's like, "Man, I don't know. Like, I'm not I'm not an official. Like, it's not my job. But like, it's hard to decide. You know. But it's very unfortunate for the for the Australian kid. But um, that's a sport, and they had to somehow handle it, and they did it in that way." I'm not the one to judge. I'm, I'm fine with it, you know. Uh, so yeah, you came out of it yeah. pretty well. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, of course. I wonder if that's going to be a catalyst for them to change the technology, though, because is there any valid reason for the starter sound to be able to do multiple sounds? I, I've never seen something like that. Uh, the, that uh, kid from South Africa, Peter Kotze, he, he yeah. said he's like used to it, like, that kind of things they ha like they happen in uh, South Africa very often. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Sticky yeah, I triggers. Don't... <laughs> they get a lot of sticky <laughs> triggers down there. <laughs> I, I don't understand how because um, I remember at like um, like age group meets, right? Like it, it happened quite a lot, quite quite a lot. You know, you had like the two start. Yeah. Um, you don't have that anymore. But like if somebody made a false start, those beeps go off. And the lines fall in 15 oh, meters. Oh, the 15 meter mark. They drop yeah. it. They drop yeah, the yeah, line yeah, yeah. at 15 meters. But that, yeah, but that didn't happen. That's what Carter said. No, nothing happened. And I was like, yeah, you're right. You're right. But we don't do this anymore. Yeah, but like, I don't know. Maybe just, just as a backup, I feel like it should be necessary to drop a line. And so, I don't know. Cooper doesn't have the swim of his life and then finds out that it was an Ill illegitimate swim. You know, it's, it's yeah. sad. No, we got to have something to fix it. Hopefully, uh, World Aquatics learns from it. And yeah, World Aquatics, exactly. Not world Aquatics. Yep. They're still in transition. Half their website's down right now. So. Oh, actually? <laughs> <laughs> um, Honestly, it, the same thing counts kind of for the like the 15-meter underwater mark because that's that's been like super sketchy as well. At world Champs. Oh, Yo, yeah. Santos. I mean, I love this guy. Like, he's a... He's a great guy and he really knows what he's doing. But like it was it was like really, really on the edge. And I don't think they wanted to take that magic moment away from him, which fair. Um, but it like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a rule though. Yeah. It's a rule. Yeah, it's a rule. Like Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, I, and there were so many, so many close calls at Worlds and and when I mean, you're watching on or like, you know, on TV and all that, it's like, oh, but yeah, there's gotta be a better way to to navigate that with technology. Yeah, I can, exactly. I, I cannot talk about that, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> walk, <laughs> walk out of the room slowly. <laughs> exactly. We'll go 20 meters underwater from now on. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As, as someone who may or may not have gone past 15 on a few occasions. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, there, yeah, there would be a better way. I, yeah, and I, I wanted that moment for Santos uh, too. He came and trained with us at Auburn for a little while, um, yeah. and, and he's still doing it in his forties. So that's uh, crazy. 
So I want to know a little bit about your team because uh, I feel like most college teams have these kinds of roles. You got you got captains, you got people who kind of do a different thing. So I want you to name names here and get a, let, help us know who all the characters are on NC State. So is there somebody who is the enforcer, who's like can say the hard thing and get in your face whenever something hard needs to be said? I think that would be Gibbs. Yeah, Gibbs. We so have, Noah, yeah, Hender Gibbs. Noah Henderson is like that. He's one of the captains, and uh, people yeah. definitely respect him, right? So yeah, he's definitely he's definitely the the captain of the captains. Yeah, so he he can be rough. You know, he can be a tough guy. Yeah. Who's the class clown? Who's the funniest on the team? The class clown, Bane, uh -huh. uh, Max and Drew. Oh, Max and Drew. Yeah, we've got two guys from Florida who are like, they're they're like always together. And yeah. like the other day, we had a like a black group meeting. That's like sprint group meeting or like just a dinner at Braden's house. <laughs> and they, they came dressed up as cowboys. <laughs> and they, it's so funny. They like. It, they, they, put, brought, they brought they brought their own pictures in the frames and randomly put it in Raiden's house, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. he kept them. He found them and he kept them, you know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, clown is a is a perfect word to to describe them. <laughs> yeah. And we've got we've got a couple of guys on the team who like make memes, you know. Like we're we're a huge meme team. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Owen Lloyd makes a lot of good memes. Yeah, last year at NCs, he was uh, dressed up as a – what was that? Um, um, Among Us? The Among Us costume. Yeah. <laughs> you guys remember that? <laughs> no. <laughs> Let, look it up. I mean, it's like – yeah, everything with Sussy Swim News and stuff. It's oh, like, got it. It's, yeah. yeah. No, we, we've got a couple of very funny guys on the yeah. team. That makes life a lot easier. Yeah. Who's, uh, who's the most likely to start a billion-dollar company? Uh, it would have been Eric. Uh, I would say this guy. I would, yeah, maybe me. It I could would, be me. I would say this guy. But it could also be him because he's like he's got some big ideas too. So, yeah, we're both dreamers though. So maybe one of our dreams will come true at some point. Yeah, I love it. Who's the most likely to be late to practice? Him? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, or Bart? <laughs> no. You were Bart. No, I think I was going to say Arsenio. Uh, or Arsenio, yeah. Or you. Or like, you're gonna name, Are you like, kidding we gonna, me? We gonna, nah. nah, nah, nah. Nah, I'm, the, we, I'm uh, not on top of my we stuff. Usually, we usually on time. Like, everyone yeah, is on time. on time. Uh, you know, like, Brayden never likes when people show up, like, five minutes before practice. Everyone usually gets to the pool deck around, like, 15 minutes before. Uh, do some activation, like, um, on their own. Uh, obviously, some people... They have a class conflict, so either they're like a little bit late or like they walk in like five minutes before. But uh, he understands that. But um, uh, let's say uh, we have a rule that we have to be. Uh, it's an unsaid rule, but um, everyone respects that, and uh, we gotta be at the pool fifteen minutes before practice. Yeah, it's a good tradition to have. All right, we got some uh, more standard rapid fire questions for you guys. And you can each answer these. Uh, what's the hardest race in swimming? Um, I would say the 400 I am just because you got to own every single stroke. And it's like, I mean, 4 I am people that train 4 I am, they're crazy. They're like, they're a next level hardcore trainers. So I would say 4 I am. I have uh, sorted out in between each pool and... I haven't done all the races, like all the events, but um, man, from my experience this season, I would literally say five free short course yards. Really? Oh my god! It five hurts. Three? It hurts so bad. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't know how to swim in the right way, maybe that's why. But that's like, why. Yeah. I would say also two fly long course. Two fly long course hurts. Uh, hurts a lot. Um, you gotta you gotta be careful with pacing it. Uh, you cannot take it out like too fast because uh, you still have like uh, one turn more and that's it where you can like rest, you know. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think to fly, like I remember, I remember that pain, you know, like 
trying to stay high with your hips on the last 50 where you like you don't have any energy to like move forward so uh yeah definitely to fly <laughs> yeah we our team punishment was to uh to have everybody do the two fly if you're late to practice you gotta do a two fly oh, uh, oh. olympic gold or world record olympic gold. olympic gold do you pee in oh. the pool absolutely yep we don't waste time going to the bathroom yep Best post race celebration ever. His celebration after the hundred backstroke. Uh let me think about it. Or that. or um oh, what's his face? Uh fifty freestyle, two thousand sixteen. No. Anthony Irvin. Oh, that was oh. also a good one. But uh yeah. I think Cielo, uh just because like his celebration is like not only in the pool, but also like during the medal ceremony where he where he cries, you know, I just love it. You know, uh, it shows the real emotions in there. So uh, it's great. All right. When are you guys going to get us? A... No, go ahead. What were you going to say? And uh, he was always wearing those uh, white goggles where you can like see through, you know, yeah, his eyes. So uh, caps, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those things. Yeah. Uh, when are you guys going to get a Stroop waffle and a Polar Sausage sponsor? Uh, I mean, oh, I thought you, you, you were going to ask if you guys could get it. Like, I've got a couple of stroop if you want them. Like, I've, I've been back, <laughs> back there. Yeah. No, I don't know. I'll have to find a company to sponsor me. I don't like Polar Sausage, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, eat, I eat it, like, when it, only when it comes to, like, Christmas or something. But, like, to eat it, like, every day. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not, bad. I'm not a big fan. I would say the same thing about Stroop Waffles, actually. It's like, at some point, you're just, like, over it, you know? I give them out to friends, and that's great, but I don't need them myself. <laughs> Have you ever had an awkward drug testing experience? Uh... Yeah, but I can tell you uh, after, after podcast what will happen. No, no, no. And now we want to know. Um, uh, yeah. Actually, yeah, this, this semester, uh, uh, we were having uh, the gold dinner at a race. Oh, uh, yeah, you're right. And it was like 6 p.m. I'm, I'm shaving, you know, and uh, I'm getting a phone call. So I pick it up, and one of my teammates, she's like, yo, someone, someone is in front, of the, in front of your door. I think uh, they have something to for the de delivery. I'm like, damn, I have like... 20 minutes to leave i'm shaving i'm wearing just a pants you know i still have a shaving cream on my face so i run downstairs because i thought i have to sign something i open the door and i'm like what i'm supposed to sign it like no it's not like amazon like we from wada here to test you i'm like oh my god you know <laughs> yeah yeah i've had i've had way too many times that they came outside of my time slot and that i was like taking a nap i remember before the olympics they came three times during my nap, like in a time span of probably a month. Oh, yeah, yeah. Before the Olympics. Before the Olympics, it came a lot. I had the yeah. situation where the guy knocked to my door at 6.01 in the morning. And I was still sleeping, you know. And I was back in Poland. So I was staying at my uh, my parents' house. So we woke up the entire house, you know. It was 6 a.m. in the morning. And... I couldn't do it, you know, so it took me like four hours and my mom was just like handing me the water bottles and I was just chugging them and chugging. The the guys stayed for like to like 10 a.m. had like two cups of coffee, <laughs> breakfast sandwich, you know, like we had a great conversation. Yeah, I was I like, God damn, obviously I was late to practice because <laughs> I couldn't finish. Uh, and yeah, that was it. All right. Last one. Who on your team is going to be the surprise breakout swimmer this season? Luke Miller. Definitely. Uh, Luke Miller. Uh, I think Aiden Hayes. Aiden Hayes. Uh, I would name this guy as well. Noah Henderson. Uh, I was going to say Quinton McCarty, but uh, we didn't know about this kid yet much. Uh, yeah. So uh, I would say definitely Luke Miller and, uh, and uh, Aiden Hayes. Love it. Every season, there's somebody from the team is just going to pop off. So hopefully, we see all of them do it. Yeah, guys, nice. yeah. Thanks for hanging out with us. Super fun to get to chat, and uh, we look forward to seeing your race at NCAA's. Yeah, for sure. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for having us. All right, that's it for this episode of Social Kick. We'll see you next time.
See ya. Hey, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with us. If you're enjoying Social Kick, tell your friends about it. And be sure to tell us what you liked by leaving a comment. And subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on Instagram. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Social Kick. And you can find all of our content on our website,